Perfect. All right, welcome everyone. Annie Pocklington here. I work for the Washington Student Achievement Council, which oversees the Washington State Gear Up Grant at your school. I'm excited to be here with you again today to host another virtual campus visit. Michael Joseph is here with us to talk about the Evergreen State College. Before we dive in, a few quick housekeeping needs. Please turn off your camera if you haven't already. We also need you to change your name. So please use your first and last name as well as the name of your high school so that we can take attendance. If you uh, wanna go ahead and hover over your name in the participants list, you'll click more and then you'll click rename to do that. If you're unable to do that, don't worry about it. Go ahead and just drop your first and last name as well as the name of, your, uh, of the high school you go to into the chat. You are muted for recording purposes. So if you have a question, go ahead and write it in the chat as well. I'll be reading them to the guests at, our, at the end of our presentation if we have time for those. If we don't get to your question today or something comes up after this session, please feel free to reach out to either myself or to our guests so we can assist you in getting that information. This virtual visit series is set up for you to compare and contrast institutions based on your own personal needs. All of the institutions in Washington State are really great, but they do provide different things for different students. Thinking of yourself first mean th means thinking about things like what you'd like to study, what you want your daily life to look like, what housing options you want and are available to you, and the availability of jobs on or around campus. You'll also want to consider cost, of course, which means considering financial aid opportunities. And of course, you always want to consider anything else that's important to becoming your best self while you're attending college. This pers personal reflection is of utmost importance, so make sure that you're taking notes today. You can find a guided reflection activity on our website, along with our previous campus visit recordings and dates for our future virtual visits. To explore all of the institutions across the state, including technical schools, two-year colleges and four-year colleges, check out this interactive map by Wacan. I'll drop both of these links in the chat once I pass things off to our guest. But before I do that, I wanna give you a big picture overview of the Evergreen State College so you can begin situating yourself in your reflection. So the Evergreen State College is located on the west side of the state in Olympia, Washington. It's a little over an hour from Seattle and about five hours from Spokane. The Evergreen State College is a public four-year college, and it's what we would consider a small to mid-sized institution with over 2,000 students. So now that you know the basics, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it off to Michael, who can give you a more detailed look at the Evergreen State College. Thanks again. Um, also, I'm really happy to see all of you and hear you today. Um, yeah, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and kind of do a little bit of a recap on some of that and just kind of go into what campus looks like um, and I'll try and make sure we have time for questions. Um, so, also I will apologize in advance while I'm pulling up this PowerPoint. Uh, if you hear weird sounds in the background, it is two little kitties that my partner and I just adopted. Um, so if there's weird meowing, it's just them. All right, so um, again, uh, welcome to Evergreen virtually and such. Um, so you can kind of see a little bit of our campus and what it looks like. Let's see, I'm going to go ahead and flip to the next bit. Um, so kind of some very basics of Evergreen. Founded in 1967, we're a pretty new um, college in um, perspective. Uh, we're one of six public institutions. We're one of 29 public liberal arts institutions in the entire United States. Um, and you'll kind of see this from some pictures around campus uh, that we have a lot of land. We're about a thousand acres, which is about 782 football fields, despite the fact that we have zero football teams. Um, and uh, out of that campus, only 200 of those acres are really developed buildings. So the dorms, the library buildings, the pathways between them, the rest is all untouched um, natural forest and trailheads that go to the beach. Um, all of you guys are pretty much from Washington, so you know what uh, Washingtonian beaches are like. It's not white sandy. Um, it's, uh, you know, a lot more cold this time of year, but in spring and summer, really beautiful. Um, academically, which I'll go into a little bit later, we offer baccalaureates and master's programs. So. All right, so kind of going into a tour of campus. Um, so we're gonna be kind of going through the library building. Um, right here we have um, the performing arts basically. So there's a lot of different aspects to Evergreen that you can get involved in. Um, we have everything from a TV studio to doing film, um, to performing media arts and 3D animation, as well as 2D animation. 
Um, if you're interested in sound and music, there's audio engineering, music, dance, singing, and theater. Um, Evergreen is really awesome because we have this thing called proficiencies where basically for any of these kind of next bits I'll show you, um, if you want to use some of the equipment but it's not exactly connected to your major, um, there's still a way to do it where you can basically go in the first couple of weeks, um, go to the tutorials or work with other students and basically get proficiency in any of the skills. So say you're somebody who's really interested in environmental sciences and one of your projects, you want to do a short film about an issue. Um, you can have access to the filming studios and such and the green screen and everything else. Um, so a really cool thing that I think is honestly unique and kind of speaks to Evergreen's personality is the fact that we allow you to dip your fingers into other stuff. Um, so really cool, exciting stuff. Um, Arts Annex, um, this is kind of going a little bit further from the library building. Um, so we have a clay studio where you can do ceramics. Um, it's really awesome. And again, uh, same thing happens with proficiencies in that even if you're not doing a ceramics class, you can still come in here and do it late night um, and do tons of really cool works. Um, we also have a metal um, work area where you can do tons of awesome things. I've seen people make swords, although technically you're not supposed to do that. And I've seen people make anvils. Um, I've also seen lots of people make cool things in the woodworking from their own furniture that they have in their own house. Um, and there are some programs that you'll do where you get to design your own kind of pieces of furniture and put them around places. Um, we also have drawing and painting. There's live figure drawing. So if you're into art and you're interested in exploring that more or pursuing that as a passion or career, um, there's really great resources where we have fantastic um, uh, uh, faculty and there's really great opportunities to just look at live art and look at still art and doing lots of different things. All right. Um, cool thing that is really awesome, um, even if you're not somebody who's interested in farming, um, which I am not personally, but uh, it's still a really cool part of campus. Um, so Evergreen, as I mentioned, is really green. Um, and one part of that is the organic farm. Um, so we have a program that's called the Practice of Organic Farming. Um, but basically in that program, students practice agriculture, sustainable agriculture. Um, there's also some animals on campus. If you're walking down that way and you want to pet the goats, you totally can. Um, and they're really great. Uh, they also do a lot of other parts as part of the campus community. So they both um, harvest the food and doesn't just go to waste. It either goes onto our food spots on campus, which I'll talk about later, um, or it can go into the Harvest Festival um, or get sold on the campus Red Square. Um, so cool thing is that students in this program um, or that are connected to it get to grow the food and do everything basically from farm to table where they um, then also practice selling the produce and working with customers. Um, and a lot of students that do this program end up making um, their own businesses in Olympia. Um, one of my friends, Sophie, scoops um, runs an ice cream place and uh, yeah blue moon cafe is another one there's a whole number of these but a lot of them came out of this program all right so um, the sciences um, let's see so oh, uh, this is basically where you do all the things that have ologies so ecology uh, biology and such um, lab one has all that the natural environmental sciences there's also a really cool museum down below that you can just explore um, the other building kind of has all the things that would make things go exploding or shooting out of catapults. Um, so that's all the mathematics and computer science and such um, and working with lots of other different um, kind of physical and chemistry things. Um, this is a really beautiful part of our campus, the Indigenous Studies. So um, Evergreen really tries to honor the fact that we are on, you know, kind of other people's land. Um, and so we made sure that from the start of the campus that we were acknowledging that with like, you know, physical actual buildings um, and displays. So this is one of the buildings, the Longhouse, which is super beautiful. And I wish all of you guys could see it right now. Um, if you go inside, uh, it smells like a sauna minus all the nasty sweat. Um, it's basically made of cedar and it's a really great communal place that our Native Pathways program uses, um, as well as a lot of other um, local tribes and various groups. Um, there's also two other buildings you can't see off to the side that we do woods work, uh, woodworking studio um, and also fiber arts as well too. So I'm um, kind of skimming past this. Um, this is all in the library building. So there's tons of resources. Cool thing I would say about Evergreen is that um, if you need help, there's almost always a resource to connect you to um, or there's room to make it. Um, so we have tutoring centers, which are peer based and also with professors and volunteers. Um, so if you need help either with a math problem, science problem or writing piece, or you don't remember how to do MPA because you did it, you know, freshman year um, high school and you haven't done it since, um, basically you can get the help here that you need. Um, there's also a really awesome language lab in that you can just kind of walk up to a table. Um, we have usually French, uh, Spanish, Chinese, Mandarin, Japanese, um, Russian, and German sometimes, and sometimes some other um, languages. They can just show up and just have conversational um, language practice with one of our tutors there. Um, also, if you are somebody that is um, fluent in any language, you can also get paid to just tutor or just hang out with people and just talk in your language. So. Um, food services on campus. Um, there's a greenery, which is basically kind of a cafe, um, or sorry, a cafeteria um, buffet style. So you just kind of go in there with your meal plan and you just get food as you want. There's sections for meatless or vegan options. Um, there's also like food allergies and sensitivities, um, and they have other stuff that rotates through. 
Um, the other places are kind of standard. They're either kind of a, um, you know, a Starbucks-esque um, sort of thing or a place that you pick up and just get burritos to go. Um, but there's also the flaming eggplant, which is connected to that sustainability program that I talked about where students actually run their own restaurant on campus. Um, really cool thing that started out as a class project and ended up becoming a part of our actual institution. Um, let's see, I wanna make sure that I'm checking in on time. So um, housing is kind of another part that might be looking, uh, that all of you guys might be looking at. Um, let's see, let me flip back to this. Um, so there's two types of housing that we offer on campus. Oh, my fingers are disappearing with this green screen. Um, we have the uh, dormitories, which are probably what you're used to seeing in the TV and media and such. Um, that's this top left picture over here. Um, you can kind of see right here that this is a student in their room. Um, Housing is actually really great. Um, you may have heard some horror stories, you may have seen some stuff, um, but it's really chill on Evergreen and that we try and make it a really nice inclusive community um, where you get to hang out with other people and have a good time. Um, and you get to also really customize your own room. So if this is your first time being away from family or you know living away from home and stuff, um, it's nice because you can really make it feel like your own. Uh, this student, uh, the furniture that was pretty much all already there, so the desk, the wardrobe, the bed um, and everything, all that's provided. The um, uh, pin board and stuff that hasn't been used yet. Um, and it's pretty spacious. So you can have enough room for this and you can have kind of um, uh, up to two beds in a room if you're using doubles. Uh, and you can pretty much customize with anything. I've seen people have six foot tall lava lamps. I've seen people have really cool stuff. Um, uh, I've seen somebody store their bicycles in there. So it's pretty spacious. Um, and then, yeah, you have a communal area that's um, really awesome. Uh, kind of to continue going over the freshman dorms, right here on the right hand side, you can kind of see a floor plan. So out of the dorm buildings and stuff, uh, most of them either have five floors or 10 floors. Um, and so on your floor, you'll have suites. So this is something that's kind of nice to know about when you're looking at colleges is that sometimes they'll have um, co-ed floors where basically everyone will share the same communal bathrooms and showers, which can be a nightmare. Um, or there's other times you have um, uh, suite designs, which is what Evergreen has. So basically you come up the hallway, um, you go in and you use one key to get into your suite. Um, and then you have another key that you can use to get into your personal room. Um, but the nice thing is that you guys can, as a group, the six of you decide to lock up this area or keep it open. Um, and then you have one communal bathroom and shower and sink. Um, so that way you're not having to try and split time of waiting for someone to finish up their shower just so you can go to the bathroom. Um, which I have to say, it's really nice. I've visited other campuses that had 30 students using one like single shower area and it can get pretty gross. Um, having four to six people in a suite is really nice because you get to know your friends or you get to know your roommates. Um, you get to set kind of guidelines and stuff about how you want to keep it clean, um, which also leads into another aspect. Um, so RAD, which is residential and dining services, is something that's really good to know about. Um, basically, it is the go-to for if you have any housing problems. And so whatever college you do end up looking at, I'd highly encourage checking in and you know getting to know your RAD officials or sometimes your resident assistants as they're known. Um, RAs basically are um, uh, kind of student ambassadors. There's students that are usually upperclassmen that decide to come back and live in the dorms to just help students connect to resources. Um, and so they can either help you figure out how to get a vacuum, how to get a refrigerator, how to deal with a roommate issue. They also do floor checks. Um, so if the person above you is just blasting music and you're not being able to sleep or you're trying to study at night and you don't feel comfortable or you've already tried talking to them, you can usually just call up your RA and say, hey, they're being loud again. Do you mind checking in with them? And then you, they basically have to come up and say, hey, we were doing a community check, heard the music was a little bit loud, it's after quiet hours, do you mind turning it down? So nice things that they really mitigate conflict um, and housing, which if again, is if, if this is your first time living away from family and not being used to your you know, sisters and brothers, uh, this can be really nice to kind of ease that social tension of learning how to interact with other folks. Um, we also have apartments too. So those are a little bit more independent in that they have kind of the same layout um, in that you have a door and then you have your own individual rooms and there's shared bathrooms and stuff. stuff. Um, but there's also a living room space. So instead of having one common area that's shared between everyone um, in order to like have the TV and the couch and hangout spaces, um, it's just the four or six of you, depending on how big the space is. Um, and you get to have a really cool customized area. Um, sometimes people set up a table that's just for Dungeons and Dragons. If you're a nerd like me and you play that too, um, it's not uncommon to go in there and just see an ongoing game that people have just left up and running. Um, and there's lots of other cool stuff that people do. Um, let's see. Oh, we're gonna skip to the next one. Um, I'm going to kind of gloss over this one. Um, there's a lot of resources, like I mentioned earlier, on Evergreen. Um, again, we really try and make sure that everything is accessible um, and that students have the resources that they do need. Oh, there we go. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's everything from First Peoples Multicultural Trans and Queer Support Services, which is just what it sounds like. Um, if you're somebody who's struggling with your identity or for working that out, or you want to figure out how to connect with other people um, and their cultures and identities and understand them a little bit better, um, it's a really great resource. 
um, uh, it's where you can go to if you just need kind of also emotional help with just connecting about those issues. Um, we also have uh, career advising and academic advising. Those are two really good resources as well. Um, basically, those are if you don't know what you're doing, if you started out as a freshman and you're like, I thought I wanted to be a veterinarian, I realized I hate, you know, blood or anything with animals. Um, that's the person you go to to be like, I need to figure out what I want to do long term. And they can either help you figure out what kind of careers you might fit in well with, ones that you didn't even know about. Um, and academic advising can say, cool, well, why don't we go ahead and put you in these classes for next quarter and see how those go. Um, there's also student wellness services, which is great in that if you're having an emotional, physical, or mental health crises, um, they're the, really the go-to to get some help, um, which honestly, I encourage everyone to use uh, you know, wellness services at wherever they intend. Um, usually you have, especially at Evergreen, you have free, um, pretty much unlimited appointments that you can have with folks. So um, there's no limit. You don't have to like, you know, say, cool, you have three limits for the year. And then if you have any other crises, you're on your own. Um, it's really nice because you can go in there and make connections and get help. Um, and honestly, they can turn you to other resources if you need it. Um, and I say, honestly, even if you're just stressed, if you don't feel like you're really having a crisis, um, it's still a great resource and they're still there for you. It's just so you can kind of check in and be like, I miss my family or this whole thing has been heavy. Um, there's also student employment. I know it's a little bit later for you guys, but um, money is going to be a thing that you'll want to have in college, especially if you're going to want to have your own spending money. Um, so if you're wanting to be able to do movies and stuff, getting a job on campus is really useful. Um, the Student Employment Center also can connect you to um, jobs off campus too. So if you're already working right now as a um, sophomore um, and you think that you might want to try and continue doing some of that work later on, like, you know, working in a diner, um, then you can also go there and see what kind of options are in the area. Um, but also we have lots of campus jobs. I think we have, um, let's see, I think a thousand or 2000 student jobs on campus and stuff available at any given point. So most students can get access to something. Um, there's also some other resources to know about police services, financial aid, and our chaos radio station, which you can kind of post your events on, um, but really great um, services that you can get connected to. Um, let's see, I want to double check on time. All right. All right, so um, kind of doing a quick little tour. There's also um, the outdoor program, TOP, which basically allows you to um, connect with the outdoor areas. So we have student activities to connect with everything indoors um, and everything kind of on campus. But TOP, um, in addition to hosting the rock wall and the bouldering gym, uh, they also have uh, trips that you can go on to once a month where you can basically go out um, kayaking, backpacking, mountain climbing and such. Um, and they have all the gear and equipment and people certified to help train you and teach you. So basically you can just show up with whatever clothes you have on and go on a trip for a weekend and have them, you know, basically provide everything. Um, there are fees, but there's also scholarships available. So if you can't afford it or it's a little bit hard pressed, um, they want to make sure it's accessible. So they'll try and find a way. Um, other cool thing too is that if you're already a camper and you don't feel like going out with, you know, other folks, um, then you can also just rent out gear too. So even these kayaks right here are locked up at our beach. And right nowadays you just have to get a key from top ahead of time and then you just show up there and just get to do some paddle boarding and kayaking. Um, you can also get hammocks and lots of other gear from them too. Right, I think this is the last slide of like kind of the tour of Evergreen um, and going a little bit into the academics. Uh, so let's see. Uh, Evergreen has tons of student clubs. Um, there's about 45 plus at any given time and it's really easy to start your own. You just need three other friends and just to go to a training, um, but then you can apply for funding. So again, Evergreen really tries to exemplify creativity and allowing you to do what you're wanting to do. Um, so if there's a club that you want to do around marine sciences that's separate from like your studies or just because it's curiosity or you want to have the mushroom club, which is a current one, um, you can go ahead and start that and you get funding. Um, I think I've known students that have gotten a thousand dollars for just trips and stuff. Um, but basically it's opened up a lot of options for students to do different things. Um, we also have eight NAIA athletic programs where collegiate sports. Um, so we have volleyball, basketball, um, uh, soccer. We also have track and field and volleyball. Um, so if you're interested in those sports, if you're playing them right now or thinking about playing them in the rest of your high school years um, and want to continue that in college just to have a cool community to play with, um, that's an option. And uh, honestly, our teams are really fun and engaging. Um, they usually get pretty awesome and rowdy at games and just, um, you know, have a good time. So uh, also the gym, that's where we host a lot of our, um, you know, extracurricular activities, but it's also where we host our academic fair. So again, I mentioned Evergreen really wants to try and make it so that way you have the tools to succeed. Um, Cause once you have that college can be pretty easy. Once you have everything to support you, then it really just comes down to you, you know, putting in the work. Um, but one of the things that we do to make sure that students get the right classes um, so they can explore options and make sure they're signing up for what they want to do. 
um, it was we have the academic fair. So every quarter, basically, in the gym area, we clear everything else out. Professors set up tables and booths so we can kind of do a speed dating um, to get to know what the different classes and programs are going to be like. So you'll have a sheet that has, like, you know, the names of them, sometimes the syllabus, and then you can go up and say, hey, I heard that this class is all about, you know, the um, anatomy of iguanas. I'm really curious about that. What is it you guys are going to study? Um, and you can get a sense of the professor, know if you guys are really going to mesh well, um, or if you're, you know, not going to feel like it's going to be as much of a good connection. Um, and they can sometimes even refer you to other programs. So they're like, oh, well, if you want to know about North American iguanas, you should go over and talk to Susan. Um, so again, Evergreen is really interpersonal. Um, something else that I like to mention too is that we're on a first name basis with professors. Um, there's no like, you know, sir, professor, ma'am, or whatever. Um, it's really being encouraged to kind of break that hierarchy. And so um, we use first name basis with between students and professors. Um, and because we have really small class size ratios, usually about one to 21, um, uh, professors get to know all your first names. So it's not going to be like you're a nameless face in an audience of 400 people during lecture. Um, you're more likely going to be up there with your professor or, you know, um, within a small classroom getting to actually know them, um, which has a lot of benefits because they get to know what's going on in your personal lives if you choose to share it. And if there's factors that kind of affect you outside or in the classroom, um, they can be there to kind of help out and be kind of a good mentor too. Uh, oops. Okay, so um, I've talked a lot about kind of the um, aspects of Evergreen, a little bit of the academics, um, to go a little bit more into the um, kind of what you're studying at Evergreen. Uh, let's see, sorry, switching, there we go. Um, there's three main things to know about Evergreen academically, um, one of which is interdisciplinary studies. So some of you guys might already be familiar with this or you might have researched Evergreen. Um, again, this is a little bit later down the line, so I'll kind of just gloss over this for y'all. Um, but Evergreen, the main thing to know about is that we do classes differently. So rather than having conventional college classes, which most of you are probably familiar with, either from you know school right now or if you've you know taken any community college classes and such, um, where you take you know um, you declare your major and such um, at most colleges, and then you take a pre-assigned list of courses. Um, so you have to take Botany 101, Art, History, um, Literature 101. And maybe out of these classes that you've been assigned, only two of them you're really interested in, botany and art. And maybe botany is the thing that you're actually passionate about, the thing that you're wanting to major in. Um, but you have to take history and literature. So, you know, have fun rereading Civil War III um, for the fourth time. Why did I say Civil War III? We have not had that many. Um, but uh, so it's nice that you can kind of, that's what the conventional style is. Um, back in 1967, though, Evergreen said, let's create something a little bit differently because majors aren't really necessarily just one subject. Um, they usually inter, um, you know, intersect with other subjects. So, for instance, in this program, rather than taking four different classes, you'd have um, one or two professors and you'd be taking one class that's just jointed together. Um, and the subjects would overlap. So botany and history, ever since humans have started picking dirt or grass out of the dirt, um, we've had a history with plants. So it makes sense that you could actually study history through the lens of botany. Um, botany and art really go hand in hand in that you're doing botanical sketches and naming the scientific portions of plants. Um, so if you're working on your hand-drawn skills, you're going to be possibly doing botany down the line too and vice versa. Um, and literature can connect to pretty much everything. So if you're reading literature that's actually connected to what you're interested in, botany and, or art in this case, then it's going to be a lot more, you know, sticking with you than if you're just reading about a different history period that you're not really connected to. Um, the example I always like to say for this is that if you're doing sciences like I did at Evergreen, um, if you're having to do math and sciences, your math problems, the bigger ones, aren't really going to be how many apples did Jimmy drop on his way to the markets. They're going to be a lot more sensical and practical, like let's calculate the square footage of the dorms and figure out how much solar insulation we would get if we were to put panels up there. Um, so cool thing is that if you're interested in having your subjects kind of connect and having them actually relate to the real world, um, the academic model that we have really works well for that. Um, there's a lot of different options that we have for how you can take um, classes at Evergreen. There's programs, which are kind of what I mentioned with that Venn diagram. Um, then there's smaller courses, which are just kind of one subject on its own that you can put into addition to program. Um, there's also ILCs and internships that we have, which are basically independent learning um, that you can either do on your own and design your own program for the next quarter, um, or you can work with a pre-existing internship and kind of use that as both credit and um, getting real world experience. Uh, that's more information on that. Um, these are kind of some example programs. Um, so these are things that students might take and study over their years. Um, you can kind of see that there's four aspects to any program. There's the quarters that it runs through. Um, there's the number of credits that's offered. That tells you how robust it's going to be. Um, to give some context for you guys, um, 12 to 15 credits is usually what's considered full time at most institutions. Um, 16 credits at Evergreen is actually pretty robust. And then it's again because we have that kind of that overlap between subjects. Um, there's also the timing of the program. Again, this is going to be with one or two professors, and it's just going to be the same schedule each week for a quarter. Um, and then there's the subjects that it encompasses over. So if you're somebody who's wanting to study natural history and native studies, cool thing is that you can take a class that encompasses both of those and has other subjects that just connect to it. 
Um, I'm going to skip over this because, again, this is way down the line for you guys. Um, but this kind of gives you an idea of majors and how you kind of get an area emphasis at Evergreen. So um, to give an example, this is actually based off of somebody I knew about when I was going to Evergreen. Um, so they didn't know exactly what they wanted to do. They wanted to kind of explore, but they knew that they cared about the environment and they cared about people. Um, so their freshman year, they took environmental sciences and a class that had um, geography and indigenous studies and also some visual arts as a component. Um, and they weren't really exactly certain what they wanted to do. The next year, they kind of learned from that, but they wanted to focus more on the people aspects and how to make change. So they looked at writing about how to do grant writing, how to you know, do persuasive writing to make changes of people's ideas. Um, they looked at labor studies and sociology about how society works and had visual art again as like kind of a ways to express that or educate people. Um, so they studied film as well as also um, painting and still art. Their third year, they kind of decided, cool, I've gotten to explore you know, um, how things are working right now and how I can make change, but I wanna know how things came to be the way that they are. So their next program looked at history, psychology, and cultural studies to kind of figure out the ongoings and the kind of hidden streams of how things come to be the way they are. Um, and again, use visual arts as a means to kind of look through all that. And then their fourth year, they're like, cool, I've had, you know, these last three years, I know that I still care about people. I still care about the environment. That hasn't changed. Um, I know that I've taken a lot of um, sciences and looks at social sciences. So I'm going to kind of focus in on that. And so they took sustainability, public policy, and biochemistry to be, again, to have all those skills to work in the professional world. Um, and public policy in order to say, cool, if I make a really efficient solar panel, but there's no policy in order to get it on people's buildings, or there's no way to actually connect them, it doesn't really do as much. Um, so they took the time to make sure that they got those skills at the end of it. Um, and again, had visual arts as kind of a side piece, which I think again is a cool thing about Evergreen and that you don't have to just choose your subject. Um, you can also have other things on the side that kind of just add life to it. Um, but in this case, this ended up being the person's focus in that they majored with an emphasis or with a, a major called storytelling, which cool thing about Evergreen is that you can actually name your own major. So if you don't want to just have, you know, English literature, you can actually name it to something specific. Or if you are knowing that you want to do marine biology, specifically in the Pacific Northwest, um, you could get a Bachelor's of Arts or Bachelor's of Science, more likely with an emphasis in marine natural sciences in, you know, Pacific Northwest. Um, but this student, basically, uh, what they started, what they're now doing is they're making basically like large installations of art projects and film um, that help educate people about sustainability issues and so show people the sciences. Um, one of their works is that they made a kind of um, half a football field sized um, art display of ceramic salmon and their eggs and kind of showing their life cycle path. So that way kids could go over there and like feel it and see it and kind of get an idea of eco psychology and how to connect with uh, nature. So cool thing is that at Evergreen, um, I get a question usually of what can I study? Um, the short answer is everything. Um, the longer answer is whatever you're wanting to kind of um, put your passions into. So we have all the conventional things from what you guys saw earlier of sciences, arts, um, histories and humanities, um, but also if you want to specify or broaden, um, Evergreen allows you to do that. All right. Um, I'm going to go uh, kind of briefly over this. Um, again, some of this stuff is later down the line for you guys, so I'll just skim over it. Um, to make sure we have more time for questions. Uh, but so Evergreen was designed so that way we had the four phases um, in addition to classmen standings. So um, there's freshmen, which is anybody who has from zero to 44 credits. Um, and that year is kind of all about exploration. So if you're a student who doesn't know what you want to do exactly quite yet, um, or you have a pretty good idea, but you just want to kind of, you know, explore a little bit more and see if it's really what you want to go into, um, that's the year to really do it. Again, with the kind of four, oh, sorry, we got another cat coming up phase in, in our existence. Um, uh, so you take those classes over the course of that year and you get to explore. The next year is all, um, all a lot more about refinement, about saying, cool, I have an idea that I don't like history or I don't like working with kids. I don't want to go into education. Um, so you refine those, um, that area of focus and you kind of get a little bit narrower onto what you want to do. Um, the next year is usually about digging deep. So that's about getting um, an idea of the skills that you'll need in the professional world, working with your academic and career advisor to, in order to see what those skills have to be, um, and kind of honing in on all those technical abilities. And then the fourth year, which is my favorite, is senior year, where basically you are applying um, or focusing all those skills that you've accumulated um, into usually a project or some sort of work um, that kind of acts as a capstone. So um, some students sometimes will do a little capstone project or essay of a 20 page synthesis of everything they've done. Um, some people will work on doing a film. Um, I ended up doing a, a solar panel installation that was worth $135,000 by writing grants. Um, some people also apply their um, skills abroad. So they might actually travel and say, cool, I've studied, you know, this in this area for so long, I want to take it into another area. Um, but really cool thing is that there's those built in phases, um, which all lead to you being a graduate because that's an important part of college um, is actually getting out of there with something. Um, and so whether or not you're looking at grad school or internships and such, you'll have all that um, basically accessible.
All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and say, yeah, uh, the last thing that we have is we don't use letter grades, we do narrative evaluations. So rather than getting a letter grade based on a percentage, um, you get a one page summary from your professor that says how you did and you get awarded credits on a sliding scale. So um, that's pretty much the main things I have to offer for you guys. Um, there's some different aspects about how, what we have in classes, everything from Socratic seminars, so getting to have just time to chat with each other, field, um, sorry, field trips, workshops, labs, um, online learning, obviously, and community service learning too, which could be just working in your community um, or getting to go into the field that you actually wanna pursue. So um, that's pretty much everything I have. Um, some, uh, yeah, uh, things I was gonna mention too is that we're test optional. So if you're not taking SAT or ACT this year or in a couple of years from now, um, that's totally fine. Um, we're able to do a holistic approach. So we take everything into account. If you have um, letters recommendation or other stuff, you can always submit that too. So, yeah, but that's pretty much it for me. Um, awesome. Thank you so much. So we are running low on time, folks. So I just want to let you know that I dropped the link to Evergreen, uh, Evergreen's website in the chat. What's really awesome about their website is that on the top bar, the top green bar there, it gives you a really easy breakdown of either home to get a look at the institution, academics, campus life, cost and aid and admission. So a really easy website to navigate. And of course, if you do have questions after today, we'll make sure that you have Michael's info as well as my own so you can reach out and ask more questions. Um, but otherwise, I do just wanna say thank you so much for being here with us today. And a special thanks to Michael for a really awesome presentation and overview of Evergreen. You can find this recording and our future virtual visit dates at gearup.wa.gov. Reach out to your gear up coordinator for more information and otherwise we will see you next time.